Let's see what happens when we have a labor supply shock. And to do that, we're going to use again our labor market diagram. So what happens when we have a labor supply shock? And labor supply shock is going to be as before, it's going to be a shock to H, the size of the labor force. Okay. Uh, what happens in the model? So let's draw our labor market diagram. We have the Y axis. We have the X axis. We have the size of the labor force. We have tightness on the y-axis. We have employment on the l-axis. Here we have h, size of the labor force. The labor supply curve in this model is exactly the same as before. Nothing has changed here. It's going to look something like this. The labor demand. Ah, now the labor demand. So you remember that earlier the labor demand was uh, a downward sloping function. So you were saying that employment demanded by firm is a decreasing function of tightness. But here we have this special thing that uh, actually the labor demand pins down just a unique tightness. Employment is not involved. So the labor demand is going to be ho horizontal here. It's going to look like this. That's our labor demand. So which is a special case of what we had earlier, where now it's, it's become horizontal. Um, so a couple of things will be a bit different, but uh, we're going to see that. So we have a demand, we have a supply. Intersection is given here. And uh, so this intersection of supply and demand is once more the equilibrium of the model. That's where the model predicts that the labor market is going to be. So the tightness, in equilibrium is given here. It's of course the same as the tightness given by the demand. And we can also read the employment level in equilibrium it's given here. And if we wanted to, we could also read the unemployment level, which is the gap between employment and the size of the labor force. Okay, so that's what we have here. So now the question is uh, what happens if H goes up. Okay, so we have an increase in the size of the labor force. What are the type of effect that we're going to get? So uh, first, the size of the labor force is going to increase. So we'll have a new H that would be further out, something like this. And a new H we can, we can call H prime. H has shifted out, out like this. Uh, because the labor supply is proportional to H, the labor supply is going to also shift out. Something like this. Okay. Uh, the labor demand is uh, totally unaffected, so we can uh, We can put it here. So the labor demand has not moved. So what that means is that the equilibrium tightness that we had here, theta, that's not going to change because it's still given by the labor demand, which hasn't changed. But the employment level is going to change. So we'll have a new equilibrium level of employment, which should be given here. So that's going to be L prime. Okay, so we have higher level of employment. Uh, so that's what's going to happen. Uh, what will happen to the uh, other variable? So what happens, for instance, to the unemployment rate? Well, we know that the unemployment rate is directly determined by tightness. Tightness hasn't changed. So here the unemployment rate doesn't respond actually to changes in uh, you know, to supply side uh, changes. So the employment the level of employment changes when uh, the size of the labor force increases, but the employment rate and the unemployment rate don't change. So the 
number of people who participate in the labor market is bigger, but the share of them who are employed and unemployed is not going to change. So what do we get when the um, labor force participation goes up in our, in our model here? Um, so we can summarize that. Right, so um, when H goes up, what do we have? So we've seen, okay, if we um, go back up, so first of all, employment um, goes up. Um, so indeed, our increase in labor force participation um, generate a boom or an expansion. So we have uh, been able to create that. What happened in that case to our tightness? What have we seen? The tightness, if we go back, back up on our little diagram, tightness is determined by our labor demand relation and tightness actually doesn't respond at all. Uh, so in good times, as in bad times, tightness remains the same. What happened to the unemployment rate? Um, so you remember that the unemployment rate is um, determined by tightness directly. It's S over S plus F of theta. So theta doesn't change, so the unemployment rate doesn't change. Okay. Um, what happens to the level of unemployment, you know, if we wanted to count how many people are unemployed, that, uh, in fact, is going to go up because uh, the unemployment level, so this is our rate of unemployment, the unemployment level, it's the unemployment rate times the size of the labor force. The unemployment rate doesn't change, but the size of the labor force becomes bigger because we have higher participation. So actually, you the so number of unemployed is going to go up. Um, so we have an expansion with more workers, but we also have more unemployed workers, just because we have more workers who participate uh, in the labor force. Okay, so, um, so that's going to happen. What happens to the number of vacancies? Well, there are two things we can, uh, two things we can look at. Um, the vacancy rate V is equal to theta times U. Theta hasn't changed, U hasn't changed, so the vacancy rate remains the same. Okay, so in a sense, the unemployment rate remains the same, the vacancy rate remains the same, so it means that we are staying at the same point on the beverage curve uh, in a situation like this. Um, the number of vacancies, if we wanted to compute it, that would go up, of course, uh, because the vacancy level, uh, which is just the vacancy rate times the size of the labor force, that's going to go up because the vacancy rate is the same, but you have a larger labor force. So here we have, uh, so we've looked at the effect of a labor supply shock, and we have a very strange type of business cycles. Um, in good times, you have more employment, in bad times, you have less employment, but Labor market tightness doesn't change, the unemployment rate never changes, so vacancy rate never changes. Uh, the only thing that changes is the number of people who participate in the, in the labor market, who join the labor force, uh, but the share of these people who are employed or unemployed remain uh, always the same. So that's not a very realistic uh, type of business cycle that we have here. So here we have tightness, the unemployment rate, the vacancy rate are what we call the acyclical, which means that they do not um, they do not change over the business cycle. Um, you know, and here our business cycle is driven is just changes in, in um, the number of people who are employed. Mind you, if the number of people who are uh, employed output, y is also going to go up 
in, in good times and down in bad times. Um, so this is not a realistic business cycle. Um, 